This is a Glass Air SHA, and he converted it to a retractable gear. It started out life with fixed wheels, and he decided just to chop some holes in it and make the gears fold up on purpose. This little jewel right here is powered by a 215 horsepower four-cylinder, and it'll do over 230 miles an hour is what I'm told. And I bought it from the Evergreen Air and Space Museum right here in McMinnville, Oregon. They've got the Spruce Goose behind there. They've got an SR-71. They're making room for the F-117 Stealth Fighter. So they're uh, getting rid of a couple of these not quite so interesting airplanes. And I bought this one. This is the first time I'm seeing it actually, other than just in a quick video and a walk around. So I'm, I don't even know what I bought. Let me, let me draw you a secret. My plan is to take the engine out of this because it's a lot more powerful and put it in my Lance Air. Actually, the new one that I just got from them as well, that one right there. So my plan, I'm thinking it might work if I can take that engine, stick it in this airplane, and make this one my new world's fastest four cylinder because we ran into some issues with my personal one that I have. So I'm uh, moving that one out and that one's coming in. Hot dog, yeah. Like I said, this is a Glass Harris Experimental, as you can read right there, November 306 Alpha Tango. Flag is pointed in the direct direction because we never retreat. That's why the uh, stars are on this side, stripes go that way because we're advancing. It's unlocked. I don't know if that's good or bad. Those are the same kitchen cabinet hinges I have in my house. Built uh, sometime in the early 80s. That's where the key would go to start it. That's a bummer, it doesn't have switches. Something, something, gear, Glass Air RG, SH2R, Frank Sigler was the guy who donated this. Landing gear, fuel, mixture, oh, there's pedo heat, okay. Nothing much going on back here. These little weird curtain rod things, or coat hangers, are the pins for the front cowl that hold the two clamshells, the top and bottom together. There's hoses that are open that are not connected to anything that's... Ooh, we have a secret door. We've got some sort of pump, I'm assuming, like a hydraulic pump probably. And then we got that. Not sure what that is. It does have a parking brake though, right here. Hey, look who showed up. Hey, it's everybody's favorite teenager, Silas. So uh, what do you think? What do you think of this one? Yeah? Ha ha ha! Five scripts. Okay, tool. So I found it's missing stuff. I'm still just looking for the keys. Ow. Hope they have it in here. So, oh, that's that's not good. We got lots more bolts and bags of things. That's. <laughs> It's got her shifter thingies for the the yoke. Okay, so we got are these mechanical. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, down trim neutral. Oh yeah. Let's just turn all those off. Let's make sure everything is off. I can't tell if that pedo heat is off or on, so we're gonna flip it. Dude, it's got an ancient. Piper autopilot in it. Standard six pack gauges. There's a switch over there. I mean, everything is turned on in this thing. Oh, okay, that's why, because, okay, can't turn that one off. What about, okay, that one went off. Okay, keys, uh, screwdriver, is that the key? Nope, okay. All right, I have no idea. We may have to hot wire this one. Whew. I mean, overall, it looks pretty good shape. You can tell it's, it's older, built in the early 80s. He was putting uh, gap tape on his as well, and I see the Lance Hair is not the only one that has this <laughs> residue stuff on it. Oh, he's got gap tape on this right here already. That's probably how he got his over 230 miles an hour out of it. And then he put these little bomber wing tips on there with those. We gotta find the battery. 
I have no idea where the battery is. I didn't see it in there anywhere in the back. We'll need to pull the hood, see if it's under there. We found uh, the log books, the file folder for it, which is fantastic. And in there, we found the Canby Herald from uh, October 2nd, 2002. Frank Ziegler built his glass air from a kit 21 years ago, and that was 20 years ago. <laughs> this airplane is 43 years old. Uh, they lived uh, near Canby, and they did that. Did that. He's uh, 74 years old, and donated it to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum. Here has a 200 horsepower engine. He joined the U.S. Marine Air Corps. He built his own plane in 1981. The kit number was 306. That's the tail number. And he estimates he has about oh that there are 2,000 kits out there. Four years is how long it took him to build this. He did uh, fiberglass, gel coating, no rivets, no external antennas. He brought it all the way up to 21,000 feet. That's crazy. He said he didn't, he didn't like it. <laughs> oh, here we go. He had a crash in it. In 1991, plane's engine swallowed a valve. So he dropped a valve in the engine and then he spotted an airstrip and landed in soft dirt just shy of the runway. Both him and his wife suffered injuries and the airplane suffered extensive and expensive damages. And he said it took him just as long to rebuild it as it did to build it the first time. And then before he was able to fly it again, he ran into some health issues. That's a bummer. Uh, and he didn't feel safe or comfortable flying it anymore. And then he, uh, he stopped flying after that, which is a bummer. So he couldn't bear the thought of anyone being banged up by it, uh, by the airplane. And he didn't want to give it to a flight school or anything like that, which you can't use an experimental in a flight school without a whole bunch of paperwork. So he donated it to the museum. And at the time it sat next to an F4 Corsair, which is pretty cool. And he said explicitly that the airplane will never fly again. That's a bummer because he doesn't want anybody hurting themselves in it. Even though I looked up the registration and everything, and you could register it and fly it again technically, but as soon as somebody puts something like that, condition of donation, aircraft will never be flown again, which means the airplane itself never can fly again. Doesn't say anything about the engine and propeller. And we have the log books of said engine after the crash. And according to this, uh, second rework in uh, July 10th of 1996, new bearings, pistons, rings, three new push rods, valve clearances. And then this is uh, an entry that I really like. Engine converted for roller camshaft and hydraulic roller tappets. Gives them more BTUs if you know what I'm saying. Uh, dyno block tested, ran good, and all that kind of stuff. Estimated 215 horsepower out of this engine. My Lancer has 180 horsepower. Uh, so my math, if I put this engine and this propeller on my Lancer, there's 220 knots, which is just shy of 250 miles an hour. That's what I'm thinking. But we got to see if this thing has any life in it. Let's see if we can't get this thing started. All right, let's, the magic unveiling. Ah, that's an angle valve. See the valve covers right there? Those come out like this, so the rockers go at an angle like this, whereas the other smaller horsepower, the rockers are straight together like this. So this one might even be a more cubic inch displacement. Oh, that's cool. And there, there's random rag in there. Okay. Constant, it's a standard constant speed prop, not an electric one like the other one that's on there. The governor is back here. Yep, okay. It's got regular old school magnetos on it, which, spoiler alert, in order to jump it, all you gotta do is just pull that wire off of both of them and hit the starter, <laughs> it'll start. That article said 2002 is when he donated it. The engine thing said 96. 
was the last time anything was in the log books and he never flew it after the accident in 91. Oh my lord, so 1991 was the last time this airplane flew, but the last time the engine was started was on the test stand at the place where it was rebuilt in 1996. And if I do that math, that is, holy crap, 27 years since this engine has ran. Oh, well that's a good sign. Plenty of oil, nice and gold, all the way to the top. That, that oil smells good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. It's an IO 360 A1A KT. Ken Hatfield. I don't know if that's good or not. Vacuum pump here. That's, yep, 80s. I mean, we got to remember when this thing was made. I don't see a battery out here. Fuel transducer. Yeah, spark plug wires are pretty yucky. All that green on there is corrosion. Oil pressure. All right, well, let's pull some spark plugs and see what we got inside. It's not all rusty. It's nice because it was in the museum. So it was in air conditioned in the summer, heated in the winter, climate controlled, humidity, all that stuff. Pop these off. All right, let's, let's see if it's got... Uh, what kind of compression. It should have really good with what it is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, and it clicked. That click is the impulse coupling snapping over to make it spark. The stuff coming out. Yep, that's good. Hey, I think we've got even compression all the way around on this thing. So far I'm liking what I'm seeing. We've got a remote oil filter over here. A Napa Gold oil filter, nonetheless. According to the log books, this engine only has 330 hours on it. Ooh, triple spark plugs. I've never seen that before. They look pretty good. The guys that build all the engines for those race airplanes, a lot of them use a company called Lycon out of California. And they, that's where they specialize, high horsepower airplane engines and stuff. And they do some port and polishing. I have to see if we've got record of what they did to this engine as far as the compression ratio, see what the crankshaft is, if it's a, a counterbalance crankshaft. <gasps> Ooh, look what I just noticed. There is no safety wire on this propeller. That's sketchy as crap. Maybe this wasn't totally ready to fly whenever he decided to not do it anymore. And I noticed the hydraulic uh, reservoir behind the seat is missing. The prop is not safety wired. It's got an alternator belt on it though. Yeah. Good spark plug. Oh, I just realized how the bottom cowl comes off. You gotta pull this little thing up so this goes and connects just like this one right here does. Doot, 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 doot. You gotta pull that, but we'll wait on that. I may not even need to pull that to see if we can get this thing started. I'd rather not. All the spark plugs look really good. I also have no idea where the gas tanks are on this. Normally they're in the wings. I only see the one fuel thing right here. And the other question is, how the heck does this side open? Does it open? Whoo, mama. All right, it's got compression. We'll have to find battery and see if we've got any spark. I just found more things disconnected. Hoses that look like could be their fuel line. And over here, <gasps> what just happened? I think that's a, out. What? <laughs> it slides back. Come on. Okay, that's not gonna lie. That's pretty sweet. All right, found two doors. Behind door number one is nothing. It's behind door number two is nothing again. Okay, really? Is there a battery in there? No, where the heck is the battery? Oh, holy crap. 
They've got all the strobe lights cut. The antenna things are missing. This is your altitude encoder. This is for the autopilot, I believe. There's a whole lot of stuff missing off of this airplane. It's definitely not ready to fly, not even close. Is that how you take the tail of this off? Are you telling me that this whole airplane is put together with like a couple little bolts and a piano hinge? What? No way. Holy crap, I think it is. That's the... Okay. That is sketchy. Where is the heck is the battery in this thing? There's the starter cable right here. Here's the relay here, and that's loose. So we're gonna have to bring our jumper cables and just jumper it straight to, to right here, huh? Because that's the starter relay. Well, it's not the first time that I have just put a cable straight to the starter. We had to do that on, I think, all of those airplanes in Pennsylvania, the, the Bonanza, the Aztec, and the 310. I think we had to do it to all of them. So this orange is a fire sleeve, and this is the fuel line coming from the gas tank, and then it comes into here. This is the electric boost pump, and then it comes out of here and goes to another engine-driven fuel pump, because airplanes are all about redundancy. So I think I am just gonna unhook it from right here, plug it in right there, strap my gas tank over here. I've got a, a fuel boost pump that can kind of pump it to this. I say just call it a day. <laughs> and we still need to figure out where the heck the battery is. I still can't find a stinking battery in this thing. Here's the battery. Well, in 100% Jimmy World fashion, we're just gonna hook it up and see if this thing will move. Like a nice, safe spot. That's gonna be fine. Okay. Stay clear of that prop. I don't know what the heck is gonna happen. Without a key, we might not even be able to use any the stuff in here. This may be the master switch. And I don't know if we can back feed it through there or not. Gosh, that thing is toast. Fuel pump works. I don't see radio. Oh, radios are turning on. Entrance, nav. Oh, the clock is working. Our squelch is working. Here, I've got landing strobes. Any, is there anything that's on right now? Those are off. Oh, the landing light's on. Hey, oh. And this, because I think all those things that pulls the whole center section the wing and all that stuff pulls it out and he cut all the wires to that so they could get it on a trailer either to get it here or wherever it was so all this stuff is stuff is cut all right disconnected it from there all right okay here we go definitely a clear prop there's the spark plugs are out there's no fuel to it but it should turn Oh, it doesn't throw the starter out. I just discovered a broken screw at the end of a fiberglass spinner. Look at that. And that will cause this, when it starts spinning, to flex out like this and then explode. Just like it did whenever we first got the uh, Aztec running after eight years. Uh. All right, that is a huge, mungus cowling. Look at the size of that cowling. Ta-da! Now we can get stuff. Hey, we can just get to it right here. That's a lot easier. And now, everybody's favorite. Hmm? Well, that's infinitely better, easier to get to. Weird props. Now I'm gonna 
crank it to see if it'll build oil pressure. Silas, go in. Uh, oil pressure is right here. Oh, it's already moving. Let me crank it over and see if it moves. Ready? Yeah. Clear the props. Huh? What did it go to? At about 23, 5 maybe. Uh, 10, 20, 25, maybe 30. Okay, well that's good. Oh, wow, that is one really, oh, that fuel hose is very old. High quality China pump. Got my uh, make it bigger hose maker. So the trick is try to stretch it get it big enough to go over that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that is, yes, that's lots of leaking. That, okay, stop, stop. Oh, there we go. Okay, all right. So let's go in and let's hit the fuel pump. See what that does. Fuel pump turning on. Let me know if it's sucking fuel up. Squeeze the bulb a couple times. Did it go up now? Oh, there we go. All right, I'm showing fuel pressure in here now. All right, go ahead and turn the fuel pump switch on. All right, what's the pressure at? All right, turn it off. Sweet. It was at 35 PSI? Yes. Uh, we got our fuel pressure and look, no fuel leaks. We have fuel, we have oil pressure, we have compression. No idea if we have the spark. I'm of the mindset, throw the spark plugs in and just kind of see what it does. All right, put in the comments, are we just not seeing the spark? Is it gonna fire? And how many tries do you think it's gonna be to get this thing set up? I honestly don't know if those magnetos were giving us the spark and we don't have the key, so I just kind of jumped it and uh, we're just, Hot wiring it. No idea if that's gonna work. Fuel pump. Oh, good lord. All right, here goes try number one. Can I get a clear prop? Go! Fired up right away. Uh, all right, go ahead and clear prop. There you go. Yep. Yeah, clear prop. All right, hold it. That, this thing floods really fast. That's a good sign. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah.
gang. Super duper. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. My plan is to take this engine and propeller combination and see if it will fit in the Lance Air that I have because this one is supposed to be a lot more power, some more BTUs for those uninitiated. And I'm, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling absolutely confident in this one. <laughs>